Welcome back to What Sold, the channel where all we talk about is the things that we sold on eBay. I am a full-time reseller. I live in Western North Carolina, and today, uh, like all in all of our videos, I'm going to show you several things that have sold over the last week or two. Um, we're going to talk about where we got them from, how much we spent, uh, how long it took to sell, what it sold for, and any information we think could be helpful to you. Let's do it. First up this morning is this 14 karat gold over sterling silver um, bracelet. It's kind of like a flat band of a bracelet. Um, I'll kind of click through here so you can see. Um, you know, let's see if I can expand this here. There we go. Um, you can see it's like it's just kind of like this floral design um, piece, but in the actual flower sections, there's um, you know it's a gold color and it is actually gold plated, but the band itself um, is solid sterling silver. Um, I don't know if I put in here. I don't think I did put in the actual um, gram weight, but for sterling silver, if it's unique, uh, if it's really um, elaborate or things like that, then sometimes they can sell for a good amount over what the typical going rate is for sterling silver um, by the gram weight. But I do both. I'll sell things like pieces like this, which this probably only weighed 20 some grams, but I sold it for $40. Part of it was the look, part of it is that had gold on it too. Otherwise, if this was like 30 grams, you know, you're probably only going to get about $22 or $23 if you were just selling it by the gram weight. Um, this was a piece that I bought for $3 at a thrift store. Um, they didn't know it was silver. And so $40 um, is an easy, is an easy um, sale for, for me to accept because um, that's a good profit. You know, I'm not, I'm not spending too much money on it. Next up is this tiny little saucer. I think I paid a dollar for this um, at the at a thrift store locally. Um, it, I've sold it once actually, and they returned it because they said, oh, I just, I don't like the color of it. Like once they got it, I, I don't know. So uh, I was like, that's fine. I know I'll sell it again. Took it back, um, sold it for $14. I think that's what I sold it for the time before. Um, it's, um, it's not actually the Fire King brand. If it was on the bottom of it, it would say Fire King right there in the center. Um, this was just a, a knockoff, probably some sort of Chinese or Japanese um, made thing to, that, that is inspired by or supposed to look like the Fire King brand things. If it was actually Fire King, it probably would have sold for 20 to $25. Um, but this particular color, which they call like a jade or jadeite, um, in cookware, like bowls and mixing bowls and saucers and great, you know, um, cream, cream, uh, cups and things like that, uh, can sell for really good money. So if you see those, take a look on the bottom and see if you see that stamp. This is a bracelet. Um, I sell lots of um, costume jewelry and fine jewelry um, because we like to sell mostly things that are um, small, easy to package, easy to ship, and expensive to ship. We can store a lot more of them here. And so that's kind of what we are really into. Um, this is by a brand called, or a maker called Eisenberg, and the sort of model or a, a series is called the Ice. And so um, that's what this is. It's a seven inch um, bracelet and uh, <clears throat> it's collectible. So again, this was like a two or three dollar purchase at a thrift store. Turn that into twenty five dollars. It's really, really does pay to know makers that um, bring higher values when it comes to especially costume jewelry. Um, it's kind of obvious when it gets to the higher brands. And if you have um, gems, you know, val you know, valuable or semi valuable gemstones, silver and gold, but if you're looking at costume piece, how do you know when you're looking at two brooches what's going to be more valuable? What has everything to do with how you inspect it, if it's signed by the maker or not? Um, if you know about kind of how those pieces were constructed, that will also indicate a time period and it'll give you an idea of where it might have been made or who made it. <coughs> this um, picture right here is of a monkey. I got this in a large lot of photographs and other paper ephemera. <clears throat> probably two years ago. This is, this was not recent. Um, I have nothing into this anymore because I've sold other things from that same lot, but this is just a, it's a <clears throat> scene on a boat. It was a, a family in the 19, um, twenties, twenties or thirties. If I'm trying to remember correctly, actually it might say here. Yeah. 1935. It was on the SS Columbia. 
<laughs> and it was some sort of trip they took a vacation and this was a picture they took on the on the boat at some point of a small a monkey of some kind it might not actually be a monkey but some sort of primate um eating something and standing by some rope it was probably four inches like a four by six uh piece uh you know a photograph old black and white photograph twelve dollars <clears throat> you know this is not a huge sale. I just am telling you that I can buy lots sometimes for $10 that have 50 photographs like this in it. And so if each one of those can be sold for between five, 10, 12, $15, then, then it's definitely worth it. So keep a lookout for that stuff. The black and white stuff's really good. Black and white postcards are really good, especially if it's a real photograph. And anything that is bizarre, unique, uh, strange, people doing weird things, uh, you know, a, a situation that, uh, they just happen to catch on camera that probably doesn't happen very often, weird vantage points. All of those things can uh, add values to, to old black and white uh, photographs. Old vehicles, old aeroplanes, those kinds of things. Um, you, can, you can easily do research on that on eBay. Here is um, a set of um, chess pieces that were made out of marble, different colored marble. <clears throat> and um, not a whole lot to say here other than they are kind of like, you know, um, I think I, they were probably made in Mexico, um, and they're really cool. They were lettered on the bottom to know which piece goes where. Really cool. I don't know if these are from the 60s, 70s, something like that, but I paid $5 for them at an estate sale and sold them for 40 Right here we have <clears throat> this old bracelet that is a sterling silver clasp, um, and it's onyx beads, onyx being a black um, mineral, gemstone. Um, and so this was one of those that just kind of happened to be in with a bunch of costume jewelry. This happens all the time. Um, two bucks. Um, they don't realize it's anything other than glass. They don't even look at the clasp. Um, and so I accepted the best offer of $24 on this. Um, that's, this is the majority of what we do. We have some big sales throughout the year. Sure. We have some really cool, exciting things we come through, but most of what we sell is a $2 item that we sell for 20 or 30. And uh, you can make a living doing that type of thing. We do it, we've done it for going on four years now, uh, full time. So <clears throat> the next piece is a really kind of cool looking uh, sculpture. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just like this glass hand blown art kind of piece. Um, as you can see, like the really cool colors in that, blues and greens. Um, this cost $8 and I took a best offer of 38. So after fees, you know, I'm making <clears throat> upper twenties, uh, cost there. This is not the type of thing I love to buy and sell because of the size and the breakability. So I had to really package this well, use a large box. Um, I try to steer clear of that stuff when I can, but sometimes <clears throat> it's a good deal. And so I go for it. I thought it was interesting. This was a lot of stuff I got. Sometimes I buy these bags of just like jewelry supplies and you'd be surprised that sometimes in those you'll find stuff made out of silver or gold or <clears throat> decent uh, beads made out of semi-precious gems uh, or minerals or uh, glass, sometimes like Murano glass beads and things like that. This was a lot um, that was really just um, a bunch of supplies for creating necklaces or pieces of jewelry uh, and they were all sterling silver <clears throat> so I didn't have any use for these I've got some supplies of my own already uh, for when I do repair work and so I just threw these up in a lot it took less than a week sold it for $65 and this wasn't everything that came out of a lot of similar items it was just a handful so um, I usually don't pay more than eight or ten dollars for a lot like that and um so that was pretty easy. Keep an eye out for that stuff. They bag up that stuff all the time. And sometimes they come in those containers <clears throat> that have little squares and there's a little different stuff in there. Uh, definitely open those up if you can. Take a look, see what's in there, and then try to estimate, do a little bit of research. This was a really cool uh, set of earrings um, by um, Ho Hobe. Hobie? Hobe. Um, it's a, you know, it's like a a costume design brand, but they sell pretty well. They're pretty, um, there's a good collector market out there. This was a two or three dollar purchase. Um, sold them for $24. Took about a couple of months actually. I had lots of interest. People were watching it, but nobody actually pulled the trigger uh, until this time. <clears throat> 
Here, I live in Western North Carolina, and there's a pottery company um, called East Fork, and they're kind of a big deal around here. Their stuff is really good quality, really durable, and they put out new types of color patterns and sizes and shapes all the time. And so when new things come out, especially if they're gonna be rare or one-off, uh, I will sometimes purchase those with the, purchase, uh, with the purpose of reselling them eventually. And this, uh, I bought six of these cups. They call them the nourishing cup. It's kind of this like, you know, robin's egg blue kind of color um, and it's just kind of a little cup it doesn't have a handle um, so it's not exactly a mug though that company does sell mugs you know as you can see i can measure them here i think i paid about 30 37 or 38 dollars a piece for them and i've held on to them for about six months and now i'm selling them uh, I sold four. I, I had bought six. I sold so four for $67 each. <clears throat> yes, this stuff, especially if you find old um, patterns or colors or rarer pieces, can sell in the hundreds of dollars for a single piece of um, of ceramic here, which are um, there. It's for 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 use. Like you can put them in microwaves. You can um, you can put them in the dishwasher. It's plates, saucers, cups, mugs things like that, mixing bowls. Um, really good stuff, we have some ourselves that we use. This was a really cool watch. Uh, I actually got these two things separately. Uh, I had the case for this watch um, a lot longer than I had the watch itself. It came in a lot of other things that I bought at a thrift store, and there were lots of watches present, but none that were like a good quality um, bull of a watch which this is it it's a men's watch it's got a very art deco kind of design on it on the outside it is gold filled or rolled gold so there's um a gold uh plating on the outside of it um <clears throat> or gold you know filling on it it's, um so there is a quantity of gold um you know you can see the face is a little bit rough um definitely aged there may be even a little bit of um, mold or something in there something that's that's kind of grown and caused the discoloration but it is in working order it is an automatic so it doesn't take a battery you just wind it and it will work for a day or two um and when i got this finally i thought okay perfect i can mix this uh, or put this in with the case and so you have um, like a complete item you have the case and what very well could have been the original watch it isn't um but anyhow i think i paid $30 for the watch and I have nothing left into the case because all the other stuff from that I already sold so put this up and within a week I got $160 here was one of these lots that we do pretty regularly scrap um, jewelry um, lots it's usually silver or gold sterling silver or gold this is one that's gold filling so there's gold filled items there's gold plated items there's gold items and there's silver so silver and gold with uh if a silver has a mark of 925 or sterling or 800 is not sterling silver but it is 800 out of a thousand um gold or silver rather 800 um so 80 percent essentially but 925 is 92 and a half percent um silver solid silver gold you have the different carats um of purity 14 18 you know uh, and then gold filled uh, jewelry is different than gold plated gold plated just has it's basically like um the adhere gold particles to the outside of it whereas this is actually a thin layer of solid gold on the outside of whatever these pieces of jewelry are um, this is weighed at 209 grams and generally speaking right now uh you're pretty it's a pretty safe bet that you're going to get around the gram weight uh, like a one-to-one -one from the gram weight to dollars meaning 200 grams in gold filling uh, oftentimes translates to about $200 of sales this you can see I got $225 out of instead of um, 209 so I did a little bit better <clears throat> so it, it stands to reason that the heavier the piece of jewelry is and the more grams it weighs the better you're going to do when you sell that in a lot um, I was not probably in I might have been 50 or 60 dollars in on all of the jewelry in here but the thing about these lots especially gold filled jewelry which is awesome for me is that I buy this stuff in lots of other jewelry I'll pick it apart I'll find the the the, the 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 like less valuable jewelry I'll put that in a lot to sell I'll take out anything that's solid gold or silver 
I'll put that away. I'll take other things that can sell um, that have value on their own. I'll sell those. And then what I'm left with is this bag of Goldfield jewelry. And let's say I've sold stuff off. I've already made profit. I'm actually nothing into this anymore. I don't have any more money into it because I've already made my ex my cost back. So I can do this once or twice once or twice a month whenever I get two, three, five hundred grams worth of jewelry, and then boom, I get this two hundred twenty five dollars, and I don't have to factor in my cost of goods anymore. Um, here was a really interesting thing. I'm gonna go down here to the bottom. Look at this. This is a piece of slate, like stone. Um, it was quite heavy. I don't remember how heavy, but it was probably four or five pounds. Somebody just took this and they painted. <clears throat> They painted ghosts and a tree on this. Uh, I had this for probably eight months, no joke. I was holding on to it to sell around Halloween, which is exactly what I did. Um, I think I only paid $2 for it. And could I maybe sold it for $20 six months ago? Like maybe, but I, you know, I didn't need to do that. And I knew that around Halloween, like a little bit before and a little bit after, is when this type of item has the most, um, the, it's the most sought after. People are thinking about Halloween, they're thinking about buying Halloween things. And so that's, that's why this ended up selling when it did. I had a variety of these. I got these in a lot a long time ago. Uh, I still have several of them and I've sold several of them anywhere from eight to $20 a piece, depending on the size and the weight. But these are beads that have been like were washed up on the ocean uh, seashore. Um, and you can see that they're very gritty, um, have been, you know, tumbled. And, you know, here's another, you know, kind of pictures of it really rough. Um, 4.9 grams. Somebody paid me $10 for that. Uh, free shipping. So of course the shipping, um, you know, is going to eat in two or three bucks out of that. So, but still five bucks. I think I got a lot of these various ones from a collector. Gosh, maybe 50 bucks. And there were probably 60 or 70 of them in there. And so you can see if I'm selling one for $10, I only have to sell eight or 10 of that 70 to make my money back. And then the other 50 or whatever odd number it was is all profit. I see these all the time. I don't buy them much anymore because uh, like this one, for example, I held on to for several months and it didn't sell. There's just a lot of them and um, so for what people will ask, things that only sell for $10 and you go around and they're always asking three to five locally, it's just not worth selling online. The, the profit margin isn't there. It's not worth my time. So I usually pass on them, but this is basically a hand warmer. Um, it, uh, it has a little area up here that you can light with some fluid inside and it essentially burns and then heat is released through this and you can keep it in your pocket or things. It seems kind of dangerous to me and maybe, I don't know if they don't use them a whole lot anymore, but this is probably from like the 1950s, 1960s. Uh, still functional, still usable. I, maybe people buy these when they go out hunting or something to, to warm themselves. I'm not exactly sure. This was uh, a bunch of tools I got in a, a, a buyout of like a storage unit that had, it was actually uh, somebody had just stopped paying for their fee and they, this was what was left in there. A bunch, it ended up being a bunch of tools. I bought everything in there and this I've had uh, for a couple of months, but what you're looking at here are um, like basically copper tipped tools and, that are um, made for soldering like back years ago. Uh, they're like old soldering irons. And so this is like a, some type of a, of a tradesman uh, or a tradesperson who would do soldering work as a part of their job, or maybe that was their whole job. But it's really cool, old wooden handles and things. Um, it's difficult to tell you how much I have into this specifically because I didn't buy it just by itself. I bought the entire lot, but I'm already into profit on that lot. So really, I don't have any cost associated with this. This is um, $135. Um, you know, because I have a large number here. I don't remember how many, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 20, you know, 22 or so, some odd, $135. I go through watches all the time. I buy and sell them all the time. It doesn't matter if the crystal is scratched sometimes. It doesn't matter if they or they don't have a battery or if the battery doesn't work. Um, they still sell. People still buy watches. So uh, usually it's as simple as going and getting a, a new battery. Uh, I usually say not tested, uh, you know, or like works, but needs new battery. Um, 
if I'm selling something that's automatic, I will specify it's automatic, it does not mean a battery, and I'll tell them how well it keeps time or it doesn't. If it doesn't keep time real well, I'll just say it does function, but it will require servicing. Um, I get these in grab bags all the time. I never spend more than a buck or two for them. And uh, I usually am more likely to get older ones, um, watches that are automatics or that have dime, you know, gemstones on them or have a gold uh, filling. And these do not fit that bill. However, they're in decent condition for the most part. Um, 20 bucks, it was, it was easy. I wouldn't have spent more than $5 on all of those, I'm sure in that, but they came from multiple different lots over time. This is some stuff I, I got from an absentee bid at a local estate sale. I wasn't there, but I, it was all like a five or six of these um, old Victorian era uh, picture or cabinet card albums and some loose cards. And this was some of the loose cards here. Um, you can see several old um, pictures, some cute ones of kids and women in interesting uh, outfits and things. Um, and so this sold for $20 and I think I paid $24 for all of the albums and everything in them. So this was just some of the loose cards. Several of the albums have already sold with the pictures in them. I had a repeat buyer buy two or three of them from me. So I probably made $100, $150 profit off of that so far and I still have one album left. This, I find jewelry boxes and jewelry containers pretty much every week. Most of the time, they aren't worth buying because they're pretty beat up, they're scratched, they're, they've, they're flaking, or something about the outside of it is not as attractive. It's not, uh, you know, a contemporary design or even a sought-after uh, antique design. This was a little bit of a different story. This is, a, a, I guess, a Godinger, Godinger, I don't know how you pronounce it exactly, but it's a silver plated jewelry box. Quite attractive, um, pretty long. Uh, the inside was in pretty good condition. It had a mirror as well. It just had a lot of things going for it. And uh, it was uh, it was $4 at a local thrift store. I had it about a month before it sold and I had priced it a little higher at first, but I lowered it. Finally got $32. Oh, this is awesome. I love this story. So uh, among various things I like to do in my spare time, painting is one of them. Uh, I don't do it as much as I should because I really do enjoy it. Uh, and I was kind of practicing, trying to be a little bit looser, trying to do something a little bit more impressionistic. Um, I had this picture of a coast uh, when I did a trip to California one time. I thought, oh, I'll just try to paint this. I had this old frame laying around, as you can see here, and nothing in it, and it was beat up, but it was certainly old, and I was like, I wish I had a picture to go in that. Well, meanwhile, uh, I was just playing around, doing a little bit of oil painting. I put something together. It was not a great picture, by any stretch. I wasn't really making it to do anything with, other than just a practice. But I had it, and I was like, well, should I throw it away? I was like, well, you know what? I'm just going to throw this in the frame, and I'm going to see if I can sell it. <laughs> and uh, I put this thing up, it was up for probably four months and uh you know every every week i'm taking things out of my store putting them back in changing prices doing auctions doing buy it nows i'm doing stuff all the time to try to to have a dynamic store um and finally i put this up i took it down put it back up one day for 250 dollars uh, or actually i put it up for 400 dollars, and somebody offered 250 and i thought <laughs> yeah I'll absolutely sell this for $250. And so that's what it was. I sold a, a painting that wasn't even very good uh, for me. So you can sell anything on eBay. <laughs> uh, I hope they enjoy it. I hope they appreciate it. Uh, I would just assume throwing it out in the trash, but. Okay, here's, uh, I really, I really uh, like the Art Nouveau um, style. Uh, things are very, um, it's, you know, it could probably be described as feminine in a lot of ways, but things are um, very curvy, very flowing, um, very, uh, it can be both symmetrical and asymmetrical, but um, lots of things that are draping and, 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 and cascading and falling down and stuff like that. But this is definitely a really good uh, example of like an Art Nouveau style brooch. It's a pin. It's a very old uh, pin. You know it's from that era uh, for a couple of reasons. 
uh, well, I'll say three that are very obvious right here. Um, you got the design, sure, but they're using this uh, kind of this amber colored glass as a, as a rhinestone. That is typical of that era. The piece itself is made out of um, like a brass. And that was also very common uh, for them to, to use a, a semi, or like a, like a um, what am I trying to say? Like a single colored metal uh, and oftentimes brass uh, during this period of time. And then if I go back to one of these other pictures, that's not a good example. Here, well, here, let me do this one. Uh, you can see right here, the pin portion on the back actually sticks out at, uh, off the edge past the um, the piece. So if you were to look at it straight on, let me look and see if I have any other pictures of it. Yeah, straight on, you'll see right here. It's actually past most contemporary um, brooches, pins, um, for like, so you don't get stuck or poked, um, have it back behind. Uh, it doesn't actually pass, pass the side here. So that's one way. Um, Another way of noticing, let me see back here, let me clip, clip on that one here, is this right here, I don't know if you can see, it doesn't have like a little piece that rotates around, swivels and puts it in and then and swivels back around to protect it and keep it from popping out. It just has a single hook like this so that the pin would come under it and it would, it would uh, sit like that. Um, that also is, shows like an earlier design. Those other types of, of catchments were not, um, patented or invented yet. So that is uh, an earmark of an older of an older piece of jewelry. Here we go, 14 karat gold over sterling. This is a bracelet that's sterling silver, but it has a plating of gold or like a, a filling of gold over it. And what was interesting about this, why is it wouldn't be something, for example, that I would just throw in a grab bag or uh, like just scrap silver, was that uh, it was unique. It's a, it's a bracelet and it has a charm on it of this little bulldog with a hat. And it says USM, US military. So this is like a military, um, focused piece of jewelry, which I didn't even know that they had things like this until I came across it, but it's quite old. Um, really cool. I was hoping to get a little bit more. I sold it for $30, um, but it came in a lot of a bunch of other um, sterling charms, and I've done very well off of those. Sterling charms are an example of something where you usually get better money than the gram weight of the silver. That, uh, so that, like charms I don't put usually in scrap silver lots. I'll sell charms individually because they can sell for eight, 10, $15 a piece, even though they're really tiny and they may only weigh a gram or a gram and a half. Um, here was a, a couple of pieces of jewelry that were solid 10 karat gold, 4.8 uh, grams. You just take the gram weight, you look and see what today, at this moment, the, the value of a gram of 10 karat gold is just by the weight of it. And then you multiply that times the gram weight, and that's how you generally decide what you're going to price it at. I usually price it at about the gram weight, knowing full well that the gold buyers are going to uh, offer me any, anywhere from 10 to 20, 25% below the spot value. And then I just have to decide what I want to take. If I want to take it fast, I'll accept something at 20 or 25% below spot. If I want to hold on to it, I might find somebody who will offer 10 to buy at just 10 or 15% uh, below. And I sell it below because they're buying it to make money. That's their whole thing. They get it, they melt it down, they sell it off to a jewelry company, or they wait till they have an ounce of, gold, of pure, you know, of gold, and then they and then they sell it off. I had this for a little while. This just came in a box of other things I wanted. This was another uh, purchase I got from an estate sale uh, absentee uh, bid. It was a box. It was actually the other stuff in the box that I was most interested in. And then there's other things in there too that you're like, well, if I get it, I'll be able to sell all of them. And this actually did better, better than I thought it would, faster than I thought, which is just a little jewelry tray that at the bottom of it is a mirror. Um, $24 plus $10 shipping. Here is a bunch of what they call Wade. It's the Wade brand. These are like little miniature figurines. They're made out of ceramic and they have some sort of a semi-translucent, um, you know, uh, glaze on them. Um, and I'm assuming they're just fired in a kiln just like regular pottery is, um, though I don't know that for sure. But they essentially, I'm sure they have molds for these. So they just pour this, uh, they put this pottery, they stuff it in into a mold. They fire it, then they take it out and they glaze it. Um, 
And there you have it, all these different types. Sometimes they're figures of people, oftentimes they're animals, things like that. I had a variety here. I got it in a grab bag for $4 at a thrift store. And it took me about two months, but I did turn that into a $40 sale. And then last up in this segment, we have uh, what was rather crude and pretty worn, to be honest with you, a uh, pocket watch um, fa like chain with this little bar kind of in uh, the the end here was kind of like that bar um, design. And then here was the clip that you would clip on to uh, most likely the top of a pocket watch. It was quite long. Um, and I didn't know I would get even $20 for it. If I get things that are gold filled, oftentimes I can get $30 to $50 for those if I wait long enough. Um, because this was so worn, you can see it's a little bit more yellow over here than it is over here. It's because it's that plating has worn off for the most part just from... Um, continued use. Um, but this only cost me $2. And uh, so $20.50, not too bad. Well, that's it today, everyone. Uh, thanks for sticking around. Hopefully you learned something. A lot of these things have value, and I'm sure you've got lots of things that are worth more than you think also. So good luck out there digging in your closets and your basements, your attics, or out there sourcing. We'll show you some more stuff real soon.